Is your Newfoundland pulling on walks all the time and you don't really know what to do about it? Well, don't worry, we've got the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Newfoundland Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Newfoundland, then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Having a Newfoundland is always a delight. However, if they are pulling on walks, it's probably something you want to sort out as soon as possible. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that canine behaviorist and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com Will has recorded all about dogs that are pulling on walks and how to deal with that situation. So over to you, Will. So here we go, another quick fire webinar that I like to do with you guys around dogs that pull on walks. Now, this is it's up there. It's definitely in the top three, maybe top five of most common concerns, queries, questions that I get as a, as a canine behaviorist and when people are coming and looking at wanting behavior modification is how frustrating it is to have a dog that pulls on walks. So in this video, I wanna kind of, just kind of go off the cuff and give you a quick breakdown of my thoughts and theories and approach when it comes to people having dogs that, that pull on walks. Now, for me, I always, always, and it's kind of the theory behind why we started on YouTube and it's now 95% of the effort that we put in is around early education with owners. Getting in before problems arise, in my opinion, is the most important thing that we can bring to the, the canine community, which is why in our Perfect Puppy course, we so heavily focus on getting heel working right from day one and making it an absolute priority. Having a little puppy that bounces around all over the place on a lead might seem cute, but as soon as those first few months of that cute puppyhood nature wears off and the novelty of having a puppy wears off and you're getting a little bit frustrated about just how hard work it is, and especially if you've got a large powerful breed, it then becomes absolutely miserable. And I have got countless cases of people that have been pulled over by their dogs, have been dragged, literally dragged down the street by their dogs. These large powerful breeds, people get them, they don't get the heel work right in the first place then these significant problems come in and a lot a lot of dogs get given up to shelters because of this problem so again if you're looking at becoming uh, working in the field of a trainer or a behaviorist I highly highly suggest that you put a lot of emphasis on helping people that you work with get it right first time round. now if you're an owner and watching this and maybe uh, you're getting a new dog and you're preemptively watching all of these videos to try and learn as much as you can I absolutely commend you because you are in a wonderful position now to get it right first time round, and that is what I highly suggest and like I say that's such a huge part of what we're trying to achieve here at Fenrir now is helping people do that but that doesn't help the fact that there is still countless people I'm nine people out of ten 99 out of 100 people that I see just driving around day to day have dogs pulling on walks I think when I was a young when I was younger I used to watch people and it was quite common to have dogs walking lovely and I think as the years have gone by and as decades have gone by people have um, the acceptance of a dog pulling on a walk has become absolutely fine. I think a huge part of that is around um, the booming popularity of harnesses. I, I love harnesses. We love working with them. We have our own range of harnesses. If they haven't come out yet when you're watching this, are coming out very soon. Harnesses are a wonderful tool that add an incredible amount of comfort and security to your dog. A much um, better way of connecting yourself with the dog, especially if you're doing any kind of sports with your dog. But to advertise them as a solution to stop pulling, I think has caused a huge influx in people having uh, dogs that pull badly and because it takes the pressure off a neck with a collar I think people live with it much more comfortably so oh, my dog just pulls but it's got a harness on so it's not really hurting itself um, I would love to help encourage people just to rewind that um, and that the joy of having a dog that walks to heel is the when I give owners something uh, with all the behavior modifications that come my way when I help people when I have people come in there they're often in tears about how miserable it's become to walk their dog and in one session we can turn that around and give them back a dog that walks beautifully to heel 
that for me is one of the best things I can give to a dog owner because it allows them then to go and exercise. When a dog walks nicely, it builds a wonderful relationship with them and then so much more joy with living with a dog comes off the back of being able to get out and walk with a dog that's walking nicely to heal. So Hey guys, if you're not already, you should be following our Fenrir Rescue Diaries over on Fenrir Canine Training Channel. That is following my journey of working at a rescue centre, helping dogs that have been abandoned, abused, given up or found as strays and helping implement behaviour modification programmes to allow them to become perfect canine companions that can be rehomed to their forever homes. So if you're interested in following my journey of how I do that, there'll be a link to that channel down in the description box below. I think you'll really enjoy the journey but I'll let you get back to the video you were just watching. When we're addressing it as a behaviour it is often a behaviour that we'll address quite quickly um, and it's often and we kind of have levels to it and it often depends on the owner's comfortability with things around corrections. Obviously it's no secret I'm a balanced dog trainer and I use all the tools in the toolbox. We've discussed on multiple occasions in these short webinars my theory on the use of physical correction that to justify the use of a physical correction or a corrective based tool it has to meet one of my three criteria. Is the dog causing harm to somebody else? Is the dog causing harm to itself? Itself, or is the dog causing any ser uh, serious property damage? When it comes to pulling on a lead, I think that it quite comfortably ticks the first two boxes. In terms of it causing harm to other people, large powerful breeds really significantly hurt their owners when they pull them. And again, I have a lot of cases where people have had serious injuries, where they've been physically pulled off their feet, people have hit their face on the floor, people have been covered in, covered in grazes, and that's been the catalyst to finally do something about it and come to me that justifies my use of a physical correction I also think that the dog causes themselves significant harm especially if they're utilizing a flat collar even a harness they cause themselves physical harm but there's definitely a justification in terms of the emotional harm that is caused by a dog that pulls on a lead a dog pulling on a lead is making decisions for itself it's not looking up to you for guidance and direction a dog that doesn't have a good leader in its life whom it knows it can look up to for guidance and direction will be an anxious fearful dog an anxious fearful dog lives in a fight or flight response because it doesn't know what to do it's bouncing off the walls it's got no direction from an owner and it has that constant state of living Living in anxiety and fear and that causes significant emotional um not abuse but it causes emotional distress to the dog and I absolutely think that addressing heel walking is a huge proponent of having a dog not live in that emotional distress to finally remove that baggage and just go oh finally yes I can look up you can tell me what to do amazing that is again it's a wonderful thing to be able to hand over to an owner that has never had that with their dogs before and having a dog walking to heel achieves that so quickly and so fantastically which is why we put so much emphasis on it if you've watched our rescue diaries over on our main channel you'll see that i always get a dog tuned up walking to heal just because of the not even necessarily for the ability to have a dog walk into heel, but because it so quickly achieves my desired outcome of, of leadership and relationship, then the heel working is a bonus on top of those things. So I will often utilize different tools depending on the size of the dog and the severity of the pulling. We will use the minimum amount of physical correction required, starting from a slip lead or a slip collar through choke chains up to prong collars. Prong collar heel walk training is something that I can usually address in 15 to 20 minutes. A dog that's never utilized a prong collar, when utilized a prong collar correctly, safely, and effectively by somebody with experience who knows how to implement a prong collar, can take a dog with significant pulling behaviors within 10, 15 minutes to having a dog that walks beautifully to heal. It's far less physically uh, traumatic than having a flat collar pulling on their trachea. It disperses the pressure evenly. There's so many excellent things about that uh, prong collar. Now, again, I always like to use as little uh, correcting, corrections as possible when working with dogs and ideally if you do it right from the get-go you can never have to use physical corrections and that's the process that we preach in our perfect puppy course doing it right first time round means that you never need to use one of these tools but if you have a dog that is reactive on a walk pulling on a walk I can tell you that utilizing a distraction based approach with food rewards 99 times out of 100 does not work 
And nine times out of 10, when people come to me, they have already been to three, four, five plus positive base trainers for the same behavior as pulling on a walk, who has tried to use a distraction, luring them away approach and has never worked. They're then pulling their hair out, considering sending their dog to a shelter or giving it away or even putting it down. And I become their last ditch effort and they physically are moved to tears a lot of the time when they see how quickly we can tune a dog up by using a balance correction based approach redirecting them to the desired behavior of walking nicely to heel. So we correct them, we redirect them to walk into heel, then we can apply the praise. When they're in that desired behavior, then the food reward can come in, then the praise can come in. But we now have the ability to tell them what we do want, but also the ability to tell them what we don't want. So again, it's one of those topics that we could spend, I could do multiple day seminars on pulling and the use of corrective based tools. It's one of the, uh, the behaviors I will offer and reach straight into that bag for just because of the, the distress that it causes owners, because of the money that they've spent on all these different trainers that for this behavior in particular, 99 times out of 100 doesn't work because as soon as there is something that is more alluring to the dog than the food that you have, the dog is going to ignore the food and pull, pull towards the dogs, pull towards other people and it becomes miserable and that basis of distracting with food simply doesn't work. Now, it also layers on the fact that we're now bribing our dog and we're in a bribery relationship. The analogy I always use is if my son walked into the studio here with a Sharpie and started drawing on the wall, I'm not gonna get a 20 pound note out and say, come here mate, if you stop that, I'm gonna give you a 20 pound note. I'm gonna correct that behavior. I'm gonna verbally tell him, and if he doesn't stop, I will physically remove him from that behavior because I care about him, I love him, and I want to make sure that he can go out into this big wide world as a good human being, not a lunatic that thinks it can draw all over the walls. And my principle for dog ownership is exactly the same. I will tell you if you are doing something that is causing harm to yourself, harm to other people, or is causing significant property damage. So again, I think if more people take that approach in a fair, consistent, loving way, based on leadership and relationship, there is no need for any dog owner in the world to struggle with them pulling on walks. And we're gonna do more videos around uh, exactly how we do that. If you want to see me do that with um, with all the rescue dogs that I volunteer at the local rescue center for me, I do that with all the dogs I work with. You can go and check out the training channel and see that in person, me actually doing it. But with these webinars, I like to be make them much more focused on mindset and a theory because I truly think that that's the most important thing. So I hope you got something from this you do not need to struggle with your dogs pulling on walks it's something that can be addressed very quickly and if you don't want to do it yourself or you think that that's a bit overwhelming seek professional help from a balanced trainer who has the skill set in utilizing corrective tools to be able to address these behaviors fairly quickly and efficiently to get you to a point where your dog can then enjoy the world and you can enjoy living with them i truly think that if you love dogs and you want to have that wonderful, joyous relationship with your dogs, then, then it's a no-brainer to get on top of this. And just like my analogy with children, we correct children, we discipline children because we love them and because we care for them. There is nothing wrong in doing the same thing with dogs as long as we do it fairly and consistently. And that does, it. no questions about it, doesn't create fearful dogs, lack of leadership, lack of guidance and direction, that creates anxious, fearful dogs good boundaries, rules and expectations with consequences, that creates happy dogs because they can trust in you, that they can get their guidance and direction from you. And as long as you're being fair and consistent, that is how you get a happy dog. So again, hope you enjoyed that little quick fire webinar. There you have it guys, some really useful tips and tricks that you can put into practice with your very own Newfoundland to stop them from pulling on walks. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Newfoundland Show.